In Nepal, Tsuji held skilled training program in Lumbini and supplied distributions in another district. As the pandemic eases in Taiwan, Tsuji volunteers helped to clean and repair a solitary senior's temporary shelter. Welcome to Dial Headlines, I'm Jenny Lee. Thank you for joining us. In Lumbini, Nepal, Tsuji held a community skill training program. As of now, 96 women are part of the program with the goal of making 150,000 fabric masks. Tsuji also distributed supplies in another district. During the distribution, all locals wore masks, indicating a strong COVID awareness. In Nepal, after the pandemic outbreak in April, COVID has now spread to mountainous regions of Lumbini as the government enforced stricter rules, forcing citizens to wear masks while obeying COVID prevention measures. During the skill training program in Lumbini, Tsuji hired local women to make fabric masks. They started out with 33 women, and now the team is at a size of 96 people, aiming at a new goal of making 150,000 fabric masks. These masks will be provided to local citizens, police officers, and military personnel. Besides forming a defensive line against the virus, the women in the program can also make extra income and receive Tsuji supplies. I have two children, but they cannot go to school anymore. I made 3,300 masks, receiving 250 US dollars. I'll use these funds for my children's education, buy clothes and medicine. I'm happy to receive help from you. The food you've provided can last me for a month. I hope to make more masks in the future. Volunteers came over to another region, providing food to impoverished families. A total of 398 families received supplies as citizens wore masks at the distribution site. This is a good sign, indicating that locals are more aware of the virus. I'm happy to receive food. We are all happy. This food can last us for a month or about 25 days. Due to the pandemic, I've lost my job, and I hope to receive more help from you in the future. <laughs> Mask and supplies. The road to preventing COVID-19 has just begun, as Tsuji and Nepal citizens work hand-in-hand, -hand, overcoming challenges together. As schools reopen in the United States, Dallas County has issued a mask order requiring Dallas residents to wear masks. The Dallas School District Office also announced that all personnel must wear masks in campus buildings. Because of this, City Dallas Chapter prepared more than 20,000 masks for schools. Yeah. Hand sanitizers, masks, and other daily necessities, but they are full of surprises. Did you guys put these hand envelopes together yourself, each one? Sure. Yes. Ooh. One at a time? Yes, all the other volunteers. Since the Dallas chapter has prepared more than 24,000 masks, and there are six in each envelope, Mr. Bland, the former principal of Barack Obama Mel Leadership Academy, accompanied the volunteers to the middle schools in Galland Independent School District. Uh, my job is to make sure that our programs are strong, but before we can make sure programs are strong, we have to make sure kids' <laughs> needs are met and the community's needs are met. So I reached out today to you all in order to uh, reach our campuses and, and, and talk with them, do some community outreach in order to make sure that the kids are safe. And the need for PPE is always going to be a great need, even if we have an overstock. Uh, the goal is to always have more. We believe that the best place for students is here on campus. And masks and PPE equipment, hand, sanit hand sanitizer, and all these items are important for our students and staff. So as a leadership team, we need the PPE equipment. Uh, we need to model the expectations as far as kids so that we can continue learning and they can grow. Tsuji volunteers gave out another gift when they talked about Tsuji's moral education with the vice principal of Salas Middle School. Train them. Teaching them, training them, then they can, they can teach you all the class flow. That's amazing, yes. And then we also provide a great Oh, you do? The yes. lesson plans, yes. Okay. The immeasurable kindness has been witnessed by the Dallas education community. Michelle Lilly, who has visited Suzy in Taiwan before, served as a principal of a school in a DeSoto school district. She also shared Suzy with her colleagues, spreading Suzy's beauty and goodness around. Hendra, who lives in an impoverished household in Indonesia, has been suffering from a stroke for two years. His wife sells peanut cookies to support the family. With medical expenses and children's school fees, both parents felt helpless. After a home visit, city volunteers regularly provide families with living subsidies and scholarships. 
Upon each visit, volunteers always have something to bring. Because in this old house, owner Hendra suffers from a stroke as his wife, Dede, earns income by selling peanut cookies. Though this isn't enough to pay the medical bills. After our visits and caring for them, we originally provided them with living subsidies, but now after approval, we can provide children with scholarships. The two children separately studied at a high school and elementary school. Volunteers made sure the education didn't pause. I always pray to God, hoping to reduce my life burdens. With Suji's assistance, me and my family felt a great help. With material and spiritual care, the blessings from volunteers have brought hope to the family. In Indonesia, some Chinese Indonesians practice vegetarianism on the first and the fifteenth day of the lunar calendar. In order to encourage these practitioners to uphold the diet for a longer period of time, Tzidi volunteers held a vegetarian cooking class to teach participants a variety of vegetarian food. During the auspicious month, Tzidi volunteers in Indonesia held a vegetarian cooking course with the Chinese Women's Association. After opening the class, we discover one's interest in vegetarian cuisine. Maybe it's because everyone cares about their health. Vegetarian food brings less weight and pressure to our body. So when participants learn more, their family members will be healthier. At the class, volunteers teach participants how to make sushi. Simple seasonings and creative food presentations will attract people. I discovered one's interest in making sushi. It's actually not that hard to make it. And after choosing the ingredients and eating, everyone said it was delicious. After hearing the vegetarian promotions from Tzu volunteers, I discovered that vegetarian food doesn't just benefit our body, it also benefits the environment. After I go back home, I will bring my family to eat vegetarian food. As more people follow the trend of vegetarianism, their loving hearts will surely protect planet Earth. In Xindian district of New Taipei City, 63-year-old city volunteer Zhou Shihua runs a steam bun shop. He has been donating blood for more than 30 years. However, he had to stop five years ago because of a heart disease. For the past 10 years, he hosted a bun incentive campaign to encourage more people to donate blood. Yeah. Rubbing, kneading, he has 25 years of bun making technique. This is white flour. I'm going to make a few vegetable buns, sesame buns, steamed buns, and white steamed buns. At this side, a customer came with a few vouchers, but he collected a big batch of buns. I came here last year to redeem buns. I have donated blood for about a thousand times. Now I get the buns free of charge. The certificates of gratitude on the wall include blood donation, voluntary service, and even donation of steamed buns. I learned from my dad. When he was young, he always helped impoverished people. Once his medical examination is passed, if he donates 500 cc, he will get two pieces of redemption vouchers, but one piece for 250 cc. He can redeem buns in my store. This is what Brother Zhou sponsored in August. I believe it's his love to sponsor and to give back to society. Redemption voucher for Zhong Zhen Bang store and Xindian blood donation site. In July, August and September every year, the blood bank always lacks blood. Everyone will go on holiday as soon as summer vacation begins, so car accidents always happen. When people get injured and bleed, they will need blood. He has been serving as a volunteer at the blood donation sites for 21 years, and a blood donation activity in August every year has also lasted for more than 10 years. Barbecued pork buns, meat buns, vegetable and meat buns, I don't sell them anymore. I just replaced them with the names of the new buns. I changed it since May last year. 
After the pandemic broke out, the whole store completely responded to the vegetarian promotion campaign. Every change and persistence is a continuation of the family heel lump of love. Imagine the only shelter above your head is a rain tarp. That's the reality for a 68-year-old solitary senior living in Tainan's Dane district. His home is underneath a longan tree with a rain tarp as his roof. The surrounding is messy and piled with garbage. Tainan government contacted Siji for help. As the pandemic has begun to ease, many volunteers came out to help. <laughs> Underneath this longan tree, where it's full of garbage bags and a rain tarp, is the home of 68-year-old Mr. Ye. He lives underneath this rain tarp. How can anyone live like this? Today we have gathered a group of volunteers here to help him clean up. He has some chronic diseases, such as epilepsy and high blood pressure. He's fainted on the street before. We are very worried about him. Solitary senior Mr. Ye scavenges for a living, and due to the recent severe rainstorm, trees fell on his home. He's 68 already and is having a difficult time in life, especially now that a tree fell on his home. His tent has been temporarily crushed by a tree. Together, everyone works with one goal in mind, to clean up this area for him. Look at how many Tsuji sisters and brothers are here. They've been cleaning for a while and still not even halfway done yet. We have discussed with him about whether we can install a car park tent temporarily so he can have some place to live and then continue to talk about how we can go about repairing his home. Thank you. Mr. Ye finally smiles, seeing how much the volunteers have helped. In the future, more improvements will be made and Siji vows to keep in touch. Three boroughs in Kaohsiung's Taoyuan district have been cut off from the city due to the collapse of their main connecting bridge. Many of the residents are suffering from anxiety due to the uncertainties. But thankfully, a doctor has been on site since the bridge collapsed. In the past 10 days, he has been there to safeguard the residents. Now that a road has been cleared, medicine for the mobile clinic was the first priority for the area. Let's take a look. This is the intersection of Yushui Stream and Laonong Stream, where we can see there are so many excavators working. However, during our journey here, we have witnessed that the bridge is entirely gone. <laughs> Bringing a few bags of medicine, the health bureau officials are taking the opportunity to deliver medicine to the isolated areas. The destination is the police stations of the three boroughs who have their own mobile medicine box. These have been prepared ahead of time since April. To help with the clinic consultation is the local health office doctor, Chiu Meng Zhao. Normally, he uses telehealth to check on the patients, but since the collapse of the bridge, he has been on site as a way of support. We used an excavator for assistance, he sat on the bucket, and we then moved him from one side toward the other. After an in-person consultation, I will then tell the resident which number of medicine bags he should pick up. With the bridge collapsing, the doctor has turned a residential home into a temporary clinic, and many patients who needed emergency care got the help they needed after a consultation. Those who we sent have all been evaluated by him. He has been reporting those who need emergency treatment right away. This area has been closed off for more than half a month, and the residents have been feeling the impact of it.
Dr. Cho, who speaks Bunong, has been able to safeguard the residents of this area for the past 23 years and plans to continue to be there for them to get through this adversity. Established for four years, City's assistive device platform mostly consists of male volunteers due to the requirement of stamina and techniques in heavy lifting. But in New Taipei City, the assistive device team includes two women responsible for contacting, recycling, and organizing. Here's the story. <laughs> Zhiji Fushan Assistive Device Platform's first mission is to deliver a stair climber. The stair climber is very convenient or else I would have to carry my wife down the stairs. I normally carry my wife downstairs with my daughter-in-law. She even had bruises. In order to let the users familiarize with the device, Zhiji volunteers assisted this family in the efforts to practice using the stair climber. I want to thank everyone. So many people came to help and teach us because we really need a lot of time to practice since we have to take in account of the weight. My brother-in-law still needs a lot of practice and he should be fine after a few tries. The sister in the family eagerly invites volunteers as they brought good news to the family. Since the establishment in 2017, Zhiji's assistive device platform normally hosts male volunteers. This is due to the work nature of carrying and delivering items. Though in Tucheng, the assistive device team is formed by two women. I feel like this is what Master Zhenyan says. It's not difficult if you have the willpower. Although I am a woman, actually we have the power. It's not that we don't have the power to do things. Therefore, things aren't that hard. Everything can be completed with a technique. But of course, if male volunteers are here, our team will be stronger. They were very impressed by the assistive device platform in Tucheng. And to be able to request an assistive device, they were emotionally moved. Upon noticing the 80-year-old senior's issues with stepping down from the bed and the tiring process of getting back onto the bed, volunteers immediately looked for an electric medical bed, replacing the original medical bed allowing the senior to live more comfortably. Every time you came here to help us, you are so passionate about this. I'm very moved. Thank you. I'm grateful. In Jiayi, an eighth grader, Shu Ting, is a child of a new immigrant. Her father died of liver cancer, so the family burden fell on her Vietnamese mother. As schools were suspended by the pandemic in mid-May, all classes went online. Shu Ting could only use her mother's mobile phone to attend online classes. Upon learning this, city volunteers provided a laptop for her. Su Ting, who is in eighth grade, received the new laptop. Her father died of liver cancer when she was five years old. The financial burden of the family was borne solely by her Vietnamese mother. Being sensible and well-behaved, she always doesn't want to bother others. But after the school changed to online classes, she couldn't buy a computer at home. Fortunately, the volunteers thought of it intimately. I rejected receiving it at first as I don't want to bother people so much. I could use my mobile phone to attend classes. But then the teacher told me that if I accept assistance this time, later if I'm capable, I can also help others in need. So I agreed. In fact, for disadvantaged families, it is difficult for them to buy a laptop. The master is so intimate to be aware of this. So we cooperate with ASUS, hoping to spread great love and warmth to laptops. In the past, she could only tap on a mobile phone, but now with this laptop, Su Ting can complete her homework more smoothly. In terms of homework, I have no worries. I can go ahead to pursue what I want to do. Even if the teacher assigns homework, I don't have to worry about whether it can be done by mobile phone or any inconvenience. Su Ting, who is shy by nature, with everyone's love, should be more confident to pursue her dreams. Although online tutoring program is not face-to-face, -face, through online video conferencing, there's an opportunity for a different kind of fun. Children who are not interested in going to school in person have been awakened to the opportunities associated with digital technology. I just connected to the internet because there was no internet before. Hi, 
可是我吃空气。Xiao Kai, who has a nasal allergy, often blows his nose and makes noises. He appears more confident on the internet. The students can answer any questions posed by the tutor. Teacher, can I talk now? Wait a bit. Wait a bit. Don't answer now. 好，我希望可以一直演。I hope the pandemic alert will continue to be extended for a hundred days. I like this class. 我们这题快一点，一分钟，一分钟。大家传完，我来参考大家的答案。不，谁呢？谁说的？对不起。OK， 不可以这样哦。他跟老师互动的还不错啊。He interacts well with the teacher, and he bravely answers the questions, so I feel very pleased. Games such as breaking through different levels and fighting monsters to get more territory all require thinking. I will work hard at this. As long as I have land with stun, I can get big trees, rivers, and mountains. What would I choose? I study from elementary school, and if all my tasks are completed, I can choose my own chapter, Publisher, and then choose the subject or question bank. There are a bunch of questions I don't know, so I can guess. Xiaobin takes the initiative to learn about things he is interested in and does not need his mother to worry about what he is studying. But under the formal education system, he feels out of place and encountered bullying. When he was in the second semester of his first grade of elementary school, he was beaten on the ground by a few children. At that time, he was very scared. When a teacher talked to him. He hide under the table. Because of his lack of attention and hyperactivity, Xiaobing couldn't help his elders and sisters during summer vacation. His mother took him out when she went to work. He often used his mobile phone to take lessons in the car. There was a slight barrier to the interaction between physical courses and classmates. And when he learned online, he felt at ease and was more comfortable. Online class provides better interactivity for him and can attract his attention and concentration, especially through games. Many children are actually not bad at their studies, but have trouble finding the right answer to a question in a short period of time. This is the importance of reading literacy. He found that people are gradually unable to communicate in their mother tongue, and languages are lost. The first time he started, he told me, "Mom, I like this class very much, and I like this class very much." While real-time internet interaction may be a sort of atypical learning environment for many, it can also bring many surprises and fun to some children. It even may make some reluctant to end their online tutoring relationships with these children. Full Foods Foundation is an organization dedicated to food culture and education. Recently, Full Foods provided training to the kitchen staff in Taichung City Hospital. Let's take a look at their presentation. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.